Hi, everybody. This is uh, Television Nation, and I'm Tracy Swedlow, your host. And I am really excited to welcome a couple of people from England, from a company called Stornaway over here. And we have uh, the co-founders, Rupert Howe. Hello. And Kate Dimbleby. Hello. Who are uh, from, from uh, Stornaway.io is their URL. And this is a, a, a platform, a new platform that has uh, uh, in, emerged to handle interactive filmmaking, interactive television. So, of course, you know, here at Television Nation, Interactive TV Today, the TV of Tomorrow Show, all of the things that we do, we're always interested in anybody who's taking on the major challenge of creating interactive content. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks so much Thank for you having very us. Much. Yeah. Very happy to be here. Thank you. So, uh, you know, uh, the story of um, where you guys come from, I mean, the, I guess I'm interested in why you decided to take on this challenge of building inter interactive TV. You've got this new platform. We want to hear about that. Uh, so feel free to, to tell us a little bit about um, how you, how you came to embrace this. This is, you know, it's hard to do. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, is. and, and like, uh, probably a lot of your um, audience, uh, well, Rupert's certainly been interested in this space for 30 years, possibly all his life. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, nine years old, trying to code a choose your own adventure book was where it all started, like it did with <laughs> code. Yeah. 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 Create. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so this I is have like one a of those somewhere dream. around here. I have one yeah. of those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've got a few over there in the corner of the. Uh, the uh, particularly the the ones we had in in England, the fighting fantasy Ian Jackson, uh, Ian Livingston, and Steve Jackson ones, which were things things like Warlock of Firetop Mountain and Forest of Doom, and and they came at the same time as all of those early computers. And I happened to go to a school where the headmaster had lots of computers in his office that were set up for people to play with, and I just got busy doing. They seemed like they're the same thing, you know, the books the game books and adventure games on computers. And then, and then I got into filmmaking quite soon afterwards. And uh, when I was quite young, and then I've always wanted to tie the things together and it's always been just way too hard. Um, and, and I've been waiting for the moment that has come along now where it's easy to watch them. If not easy to make them, it's easy to watch, uh, you know, multi-perspective, multiple choice, you know, branching narrative, all kinds of different things that Netflix are doing at the moment with the things like they've done nine or 10 of them now with Bandersnatch and, and, and lots of different cartoons and, uh, um, and now Kimmy Schmidt and, you know, they're really exploring lots of different types of pre-recorded interactive narratives and creating them has always been really difficult and, and it, we keep on rediscovering this over the course of the time that I've been interested in this. We try and crack it in different media from Laserdisc to CD-ROM to early web. I messed around a lot with early web video before YouTube and tried to do some of these things here. But now the interfaces have just got a lot nicer and they're in our, in our hands, in our living rooms. And that old thing about Lean, lean back media versus lean forward media. We're all leaning forward a lot now, aren't we? And 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 uh, and every video that finishes on YouTube on Netflix prompts you to watch another and another and another and another. Um, and so naturally, those kind of in non-linear narratives are, are going to be more and more possible within streaming platforms. So it felt like a really good time to do what I wanted to do forever, which was create tools for creators so that you can easily map out and screen write and view your stories as they go along within a uh within a i mean we've built a web application torn away is a web application that lets you map out and write and see you play play test your stories and then publish them out to our uh to our platform or embed it on your apps or sites or export it out and import it into any other streaming platform. So the idea is to try and be as open and compatible with all professional production workflows as possible. So that what Charlie Brooker, Annabelle Jones, who made Bandersnatch talked about just the pain of making it, you know, he said, 
about it was painful it. to hear them say how painful it was yeah, because it, was it made really me worry. Sad. Sad. It made me worry that we never see it again. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I want to hear a little bit more about Kate in a second, but uh, uh, <laughs> I know you're there. But uh, <laughs> I, you know, I know Netflix. Netflix were um, said they were going to continue to invest in this. We are seeing yeah. some more. Um, at some point after we talk to Kate, I want to hear uh, what you think about what um, Netflix has done. There are a few other companies that have stood out recently. It's still such a, a sort of quicksand environment, right? Somebody yeah. tries something, then something disappears and something experiments. I mean, we've been dealing with this for um, last decade or yeah. more, you know, yeah. anyway, let's, let's save that for a minute. Cause uh uh, I'll, I'll do that. But Kate, uh, tell us a little bit about yeah why you're so in love with um, interactive storytelling. And by the way, I read your background and we have a lot of similar, similar passions. Okay. By the way. Interesting. Like musical theater. Yeah. And um, right. yeah. All of, we can discuss that another time. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, interestingly, that is kind of where my passion came from because I've always been, I, I for 20 years, I've been a performer um, or in live theater and music environments where interactivity is is the heart of what I do, you know, and moving the audience and engaging them in a way where I can feel their shift, you know. And um, so in a funny, you know, I then happen to be married to Rupert. Um, <laughs> so I've heard him talk about this, um, his passion on the kind of film and TV side. And I think it was only it was only a matter of time before both of us just went, okay, there's something here, let's make a tool that really works for creatives who want to tell those stories, who are, you know, who are coming from a point of view of how do I move my audience? How do I move them to press that button? How do I move them to be engaged with that character? You know, um, that for me was at the heart of uh, getting involved with Storn Away, um, aside from obviously being married to the co-founder. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then I have a background in television kind of by the fact that my father is a broadcaster, my grandfather was um, nicknamed Voice of the Nation for the BBC, Richard Dimbleby. Um, so, so I was kind of aware. Um, all my all my performing life, I was aware of this kind of um, coming from this family who um, actually wanted to use the medium, things like radio. You know that intimacy of radio, where my grandfather started, and sort of. And, and where technology doesn't get in the way, technology helps you get to where you need to get to, which is the audience. And for mm -hmm. me, Stornaway was a kind of natural in an odd, you know, a follow on from that of like, let's create something that's so delightful to use that people who want to tell stories just can use it easily and, and communicate better. That, you know, that's where I was coming from, I think. Um, yeah. Sorry. No, no I, I think um, that sounds great. I mean, you have that uh, that legacy and, and a passion um, and, and it probably an interest in television. So it's interesting that it's um, a platform for television makers, for filmmakers, because these two things are blending together, right? They're no longer one or the other. In fact, filmmaking on the big screen is sort of out of that loop entirely these days, right? Yeah. Um, so it's really about storytelling or uh, using this the screen to uh, to narrate experiences in new ways. Now we're in this environment, right, where uh, COVID, right, uh, is uh, enforcing a lot of shutdowns of production teams and things like this. So I, I think it's fascinating uh, that you were sensitive because I said saw in your press release that you were sensitive to the fact that. Uh, uh, this might be a great tool. And then let them want you explain what that tool is after I get out my statement. But this is a time where people could take archival content, archived content, they can take uh, reruns, you know, they can take all kinds of other content that these networks have access to, or, or people could create new, uh, you know, stories, but that because we're here in front of our screen and looking for something to do, the interactivity has a sort of primacy all of a sudden, or there's the potential to allow interactivity to take a, a much grander role. So I'm kind of interested in what you, what you have to say about the potential for that, but please first describe um, what the platform does, because it reminds me a little bit of HyperCard. Remember that? Right. I'm, I'm dating myself. HyperCard. <laughs> Uh, 
And, you know, I, we could go into the whole history of interactivity, you know, with yeah. annotations on YouTube, which don't exist anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. A long story. Yeah. I have to tell you about that another time. But anyway, so tell me a little bit more about what the platform does. I'll probably show some visuals here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then tell me a little bit about how you think it's going to be used going forward. Sure. Great. Thank you. So it is a an end-to-end -end production tool primarily. So you has a story map where you map out your story visually. And the idea of the whole thing is that you can create, write, play test, produce and publish your story without having to code. So you map out your story in a flowchart that's specifically designed for interactive filmmaking, uh, which has a number of really nice little features that help you avoid the kind of spaghetti or post-it note nightmares that you get otherwise when you're trying to lay out lots of different branches. Um, and then you can attach sections of script to each individual. I have my item. own. I have all my own little things that I do. <laughs> We're trying to tell stars. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. It just happens to be right yeah. here in front. And, and you know, in TV, I, so I spent the last a very long time in, in uh, TV in production and in helping people translating between technology and creativity and all of the edit suite and production offices are all just covered in lots of little notes and ways of trying to whiteboards and post-it notes and this is trying to this is this is creating a uh a digital map where you have your essentially your post-it notes which we call story islands and a story island is is just a a, a block which it can, might be a location or a scene or a sequence um and they connect via choices that you make out to other story islands. And, and then each story island has sections of scripts attached to it. Um, and, and then you attach media. So you attach video files to your story islands and then you can instantly play through your story. So, you know, in the sort of most basic form, you play and then you get your choices on screen and you can click to jump to the other islands and you, just play test through your video story. So bringing that mapping and that creative scripting um, and then the actually play testing to see how all the different elements work with each other into something you can do without having to code, it just kind of works. Um, and so you can storyboard and you can um, upload phone videos or audio or whatever you want to do just to kind of get a sense of your story. And it also then allows you to understand what you need to go out and shoot if you're shooting and as you alluded to there are a bunch of people who are doing stuff with it already even before we released it which are reversioning and repurposing repackaging existing content um animation and live action stuff well, so i don't think they're i don't think they're doing it enough i have actually through television nation here i've been asking a lot of people so you know, what are your customers, do, your clients? Are they embracing all of this old content? I mean, some of these networks like CBS All Access, they have, you know, decades of content they could be using. Is anyone exploring uh, creating a, a business by offering interactive content or yeah. just, just generating new forms of content um, from their library? So I think you guys, uh, you know, that's what you're pitching, right? And you might even yeah. have some deals. I mean, you, you said uh, in the press release that there's some announcements that are coming out. Can you hint at what's happening? Is anybody embracing these ideas? Yes, <laughs> they are. But of course, as you'll know, there are like Every, rules of security. Everybody's so secret about what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and are these large yeah. networks? Are these large? Yes. Okay. Yes, very much. So, yes, thank you for letting us hint what we can hint at. <laughs> okay. they are, some are they in America or everywhere. in the UK? Of course, well, I was, you know, in the US and the UK. I mean, I yeah. think what's interesting is that whilst production may have stalled in some areas, it also development is very much still going on. And actually, I think there's a kind of feeling yeah. of there is a feeling of boldness in development. So we we're part of some interesting projects there where where possibly if we were a month earlier, two months earlier, it would have been like, oh, not sure. Now it's like, yeah, go for it, try it out, see what happens. You know, um, I think I think that's really exciting. And we're talking to a few partners, not just in the UK, US, New Zealand, but about about kind of the ways in which the industry is going to have to come together and find these innovations. Like th this is the time where where kind of agile, innovative tools come into their own because actually 
everyone's stuck in their homes and we've got to find more nimble ways of of making the most of the creativity that people have and the and the like you say the archive content they've got you know just waiting to be I think people are waiting for new formats they're waiting for innovation here how much can they keep watching you know yeah. the same old series over and over again uh, although I am re-watching, I think, British Baking Show, which I think is out in your studio somewhere. Uh, again, maybe the second or third time. It's so stupid. I keep forgetting who wins. But that, no, that's not true. But anyway. Well, and of course, yeah. with all the media that's coming out from people's homes, you know, all the kind of um, uh, singing videos and other types of content that are coming out, I think, you know, there's a push it there, isn't there, that's coming from yeah. the groundswell. And hopefully that'll have a knock-on effect as I, well. I think that... The, you know, the technology's there, the audience behavior and demand is clearly there. The, yeah. You know, the, ex the experiments that Netflix have had have shown that there's the demand and the enthusiasm there. And the producers, actually the production- They got a lot of traffic, right? They got a lot of traction for Vandersnatch, a lot of water yeah. cooler uh, traction, but also real numbers from what I understand. Absolutely, I mean, they're, they're quite coy about their numbers, but it was clear, they, the, way, the way that they described it was as a huge hit. And that you know it helped them understand that they needed to invest more and and uh, in in interactive stories and uh, and and just anecdotally you know the the transformation we we started developing this idea uh, well it sort of came fully formed in about July 2017 and took a while to mature and come around in various different ways but it was hugely accelerated by Bandersnatch because suddenly everybody knew what we were talking about we walked into a room and said. You know, we're trying to make interactive stories, interactive films, interactive series. You suddenly say you're making things like Bandersnatch. Everybody understood. And and in among the people with families, Bear Grylls was huge. The Bear Grylls story was hugely popular. And and that's really helpful. But of um, course, Netflix are its own. They're, they're, you know, they've developed their own tools for it, um, yeah. which not everyone can use. So I think there's we we're. Rupert's always been in a sphere where he's worked in the industry, but has always been really excited by enabling, you know, indie production companies as well to just use use technology in a way that can unlock the creative. Yeah, the, and the tools, the tools so. that, su that succeed, the ones that we all and the, where all of the tools end up having to go, even if they start off trying to create something proprietary in this industry, everything has to work towards interoperability. Yeah. And I, I was going to ask you if um, Charlie and Annabelle, you know, uh, were going to be using your tool, but I mean, they probably. I, well, they're, 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 we, we, <laughs> we've heard that he, I, I mean, there is a sense that I don't think he'll ever go back there. <laughs> <laughs> he, we will, we will give it to him. We, we, yeah, we, we know some, we know people who know him and we will give it to him uh, to have a play with soon enough. I, I think, Netflix obviously have their own thing going on with this. And we've just, you know, we are talking to people who are, uh, yeah, as, as we launch and as it goes on, it will be really fun to see I would, if he thinks that it'll, it would have made his life a lot easier. It which would have made I, it, it would so have much easier. Yeah. And I think in terms of the budgeting and the schedule, like the companies we're talking to, they can immediately see, oh, okay, I'm actually going to know how much extra I'm going to have to shoot here yeah. to get that watch time, you know, and, and that, that's, a, that's a problem solver that, you know, we, we hope to address really. And I, and I think just going back to what we were saying before, the, the producers really get it. Um, the commissioners are excited by the idea of it at different broadcasters, but they're just not aware that, um, oh, excuse me, sorry. Something's happened with my audio here. Excuse me. I've got something. I need to turn this off. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. It went all hissy <laughs> for a moment. Sorry. So, the yeah, the producers really get it. The commissioners are excited by it, but they're not aware of what's possible within their own platform. So all of these different streaming platforms that are popping up, I think the technologists um, and the commission, there's a sort of gap of communication between uh, commissioning departments and technology departments within those uh, broadcasters and streamers that we're in the process of unlocking by saying, actually, it doesn't need to be that difficult. The interactivity is already inherent within your platforms, you know, just as it is within YouTube, just as it is over at Netflix, where they've they got the product team and the technology team sort of working hand in hand to build this thing. And, and that's more of a challenge for other broadcasters. But are they are those the only two outlets that could handle the interactivity? I mean, what's the format that it gets spit 
in, out into, can, is this something that can run on all the OTT platforms? I mean, what are we talking? We've here? built something that is very simple. So the playlist that is created by this, the, the data <clears throat> that ties it all together is very simple. So what we can export is essentially just an open standard playlist that can be imported into any system uh, and it's then up to the, you know, we've been talking to the BBC who have made their own, uh, they, they've been working with a thing called object-based media and uh, working with their own tools to create interactive stories. And there's a pathway that they're moving towards um, with getting it into things like iPlayer, I think, which is, you know, it's talking to those people in those teams and letting them understand actually this level of interactivity is not that, it's not that difficult. It, you just have to do it in a way that doesn't, you know, uh, that doesn't cause you any problems and is very simple and is interoperable with other things. And so uh, what we're trying to do at the moment is have lots of conversations with people about that interoperable standard that is uh, means that producers can deliver to them and deliver to other people. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of it, it's just, it's just like YouTube in a way. They're clips, media clips, that have links going out to other places and then some other metadata around that that describes what they are and and what you've seen before so that you can have some sort of game logic around that and I mean, obviously you're both passionate about uh, storytelling but to some extent this could be uh used by ad agencies yeah. you know uh and or drive storytelling and commerce you know i mean i could see amazon potentially embracing this. I mean, they would be smart to do that. Yeah. All of their, uh, you know, with their content and c connection to their commerce, you know, layer. Yeah. I, and I, I think, I mean, we, we, we're focusing to begin with on the high end TV storytellers. Cause we feel like getting that right with the storytelling mm -hmm. and the workflows there then just opens up to everything else. It creates, both it creates a halo effect in terms of it's you know it's obviously great content being created by these people with some great ideas but also you kind of crack the workflow uh in a way that then flows out to everybody else in real estate i mean everybody who comes into this you know comes in with a different idea of how they could use it in their industry digital marketing uh with video is every every business is now using video in one way or another everything is video yeah. The whole world is video, and, and your true. your pricing is unbelievable, right? I well, mean, you must have an enterprise version, and then you have an, a sort of ramp up version. I think I saw fifty dollars. Yes, fifty dollars per month. Um, per user per month. That's yeah. fantastic, right? That really democratizes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. that's that's. And We've that's had the a idea few is... people challenge us on the pricing, and we we were very much like we want to price it for adoption. We want people to be able to use it. You know. Um, as possible, because the more, again, to do with the standards, the more we can share that and make it easy, then, yeah. you know, it's it's opening up that market. And that's that's very much. And, a, a and you know, the product it's aimed at producers and production companies um, to 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 use to deliver to the larger enterprises. And um, we, you know, have no doubt that there'll be lots of seats sold to people in larger enterprises. But but it the model that is working for that and the people are used to for production tools is that creative cloud model. I mean, people have a lot to say about the different prices of present price levels of a creative cloud, but it's sort of a, you know, a subscription that is affordable and that producers can pick up and drop according to their production needs. You know, we have a couple of people who are on two, two months uh, funded development projects where they're going to, pay for some licenses for their team for a couple of months and then they'll pause it for a few months until they get greenlit and then when the production picks up they'll pick it up on that and and that that flexibility is really important to productions i think and yeah and can while, you uh I'm sorry so go ahead no, no, no you go ahead whilst rupert has a huge amount of expertise navigating this space um for like talking with the technology heads of technology and the producers, you know, holding both of those. I think we were always, we always wanted to make something that made it easier for those conversations to be had. And also that, let you know, there are now large technology teams who are more than able to take this and run with it and yeah. do their own bespoke thing, bring in a development company to add 
all the bells and whistles. You know, we wanted really just this solid tool that enabled that to happen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm just wondering, you know, how you are uh, getting it out to the hands of these smaller production companies. Is there an effort in the UK? And I guess the flip side of that is, um, could the platform, um, is there an API or something that could be, so you could integrate this into say YouTube. So YouTube could adopt us across, or, you know, they probably would re-engineer it. And, <laughs> but so, I, I mean, and, and, you know, as I mentioned before, they had annotations, right. And there was such yeah. incredible creative work going on at that time, but they did away with it for cards or, you know, other yeah. things. So I, I still think that they're a perfect, um, environment for this but what do you think about so well I'll, let me yeah, yeah I'll, 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 well i mean in terms of um uh the api yes the, the the whole idea you know we haven't released it publicly yet because um you know we, we are cracking one nut at a time we're just releasing our public version of stone away and working with people privately but yes as we move on it's going to be more and more integrated with production management tools and other production tools that's the idea um and also you know the, the as i said the open standard of what we did the package we deliver out to is very much based around the kind of imf style packages that you deliver out for finished production now so um that that's really important to us that it plays with everything and i mean you, you the, the the problem of systems that have existed before like youtube annotations so, so I, I was i created what i think is the first uh interactive story in youtube annotations as soon as they released it i really and created a little video blog in our house That's we were living, living in western canada at the time i think it's i think it's, I think it's true though if you I'd look love to see it. I'd love to see it. We've, we've had the inventors of annotations speak at our tv oh. or t shows um there, there were uh, one guy who was in charge of the whole program, and then another guy who actually invented it, uh, who was from Israel. And then they, uh, but right. it's exactly. all gone away. Yeah, I was, I, I was really excited about it when it came out, and um, and I think that you know, it when they took it away in order to implement cards, it was a, another example of the kind of graveyard of project and project tools that have existed through interactive media throughout the whole of the last, all of these projects that now exist on dev platforms. And part of the reason for open, the open standard push is to try and create something that everybody shares so that when you create a project, it's so openly coded that it can continue to exist in other forms later on. Now that we've got a kind of, you know, some fairly shared standards about encoding of video files themselves, you know, it, everything will decay and disappear eventually, but H.264 MP4 files will be around for a while. And those other kind of streaming encoded versions of things will be around for a while. But the, arch the architecture behind it is really important that that is something that everybody can play with. And if we go away eventually, then hopefully what we leave behind is something that can be picked up and, and archived and the projects and stories themselves can continue to live on in other systems. And uh, Kate, I should bring you back into the conversation a little bit because you have this this whole um, you know uh, background in news. What do you what do you what do you both or what do you think about interactive news? You know, um, as a as an offering, not just storytelling, but news. Don't you think that this might be an opportunity? Yeah, and actually, I have had conversations with my father around that because he's um, whilst he's a very traditional broadcaster. Um, he, he presents the elections um, for the BBC. That's That's been his job for like many, many years. And and his l love of the elections is the live element and the engagement of the audience. Like he's always, that's his passion. Um, and he, in fact, uh, he presented Question Time, which is all about the audience. So um, he's, he's interestingly really open to that idea in a way that you wouldn't possibly think of someone of his generation. Um, because he he thinks it is all about the audience. He you know he's he's like we we need to um, do that. I guess the question is how how you do that uh, in news. And I'm not no expert, not pretending to be. You know how how you enable um, both that connection, but then also the really in depth kind of broadcasting that say the BBC does. Um, you know you need these things sitting side by side, don't you? And you need um, 
uh, the teams behind them as well. I think one of the things we've talked a lot about is the collaboration of the teams through researchers, edit producers, you know, you know, everyone really needs to be involved in um, taking that moment so that when the, when you have the live moment, they're all there and they all kind of know the story map. You know, if you talk about Stornoway, you know, if you have a map and you kind of go, if it goes this way, we know where we're going. If we go this way, you know, we've talked, we've talked to some um, broadcasters about uh, integrating Stornoway in that way to enable kind of, um, in a way, scenario planning um, for for live events. Yeah, you know, it would be great to have a platform. Maybe yours is the platform um, to give some of the independent voices on YouTube or other production companies, um, or just the average person who wants to pay for this, but the ability to create their own interactive news or their own interactive. You know, um, it's almost like they're becoming their own director. And yeah. so here's what I think uh, about the world of whatever you know, perspective they, they're passionate about. Uh, I think that might be a, a great way to explore this, right? Somebody, they might want to tell their own version of the news, you know, which yeah. stories they think are important. Yes. I think the BBC's done some really interesting work on this. They're, I mentioned their object-based media. I hope I've got that right, the object-based media thing. Um, the team, uh, Mike Armstrong there in the BBC R&D and his team have done a lot of work around trying to create responsive versions of particularly things like news stories and documentaries that adapt to how much time you've got to watch, how interested you are in various different things. And they're obviously trying to play also with how their responsibility in, ter in terms of the privacy of data and you know your, what your preferences are and what your personality is. They, they did a, a show, a version of their um, technology program, BBC Click, which, um, was a branching narrative, but also kind of monitored what you watched and then gave you a personality report at the end of it. Um, and I think they're quite they're quite smart about the way that they're thinking about that stuff and moving towards a more responsive type of media. And and I'm quite in, quite excited about using Stornoway within the context of those kind of intelligent platforms to help people craft journeys. We've talked a lot about how mm people making documentaries and factual programs can, uh, the there are children's producers we're working with who are trying to, at Children's BBC, they have to produce programs, I'm sure PBS is the same, produce programs that are um, for kids that are six and for kids that are 16. And mm -hmm. it's impossible to meet those two different things. So there's loads of stuff that just gets left out of linear programming, but it's all there. They've either decided not to shoot it or they've shot it and left it on the digital cutting room floor. and including that, including different versions that respond to you and yeah, allow you to be able to direct essentially the yourself. same story, but just something that's more suited to what you're interested in and drill down into things is really exciting. Uh, there's so much more to talk about that. I mean, there are so many projects out there um, that I'm sure you, you're aware of that are exploring interactive TV, although that I shouldn't say a lot of them. There are some, there's a small amount and uh, you know, uh, I can either bring them up or not, but I mean, do you have any feelings about what they're doing right or wrong or? Uh, it's a funny not. thing, isn't it? Because when we started this, we had actually quite a lot of conversations about even using the word interactive, because of course it means so many different things to so many different people. Um, and and I think, uh, I think we've quite often during the process had to come back to what it means to us, you know, like what, what do we want uh, what do we want people to feel when they use Stornoway? You know, we want them to feel kind of excited about engaging, you know, and for me, in a way, that's what inter interactivity is about, engaging with the content. So not lying back and just having it there. It's like, yeah, it's engaging with that content in, in whatever way. And I think there's some really exciting work. We've been talking to someone who I think you've had on TVOT, um, uh, Eli from Hovercast, who's doing some quite exciting um, of live interactivity. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, uh, that was a nice little moment of cross ocean <laughs> connection. Um, so, and yeah. and I think um, I think it's always going to exist, though, isn't it? Outside of a mainstream, you know, it's always going to be the little things here. Uh, um, 
not that it'll exist, but it'll it'll thrive outside because it's hard. It's not. That's the whole point of it. At some level, it's like it's it's designed to be um, responsive and agile, and you can't have that kind of coming top down. You can't. That doesn't happen. So it, it, I think that the challenge is to cr create an interactive story experience that also makes people feel right. That's always yeah. the big challenge. Yes. yes, that's something. And, we consequences yeah. we've talked a lot about yeah. consequences and i think you know again in this world that we're in now there's a need more than ever for like multi-layered storytelling stories that are um emotional and also um yeah and meaningful and and about you know choices that you make and the consequences of those and um i think there's so much to be explored in that area as the world becomes more we as as it shows itself to be more complicated than we yeah you know, <laughs> Ho Hovercast talk about their, they have a model for prompting and then responding and then rewarding, you know, it's a kind of cycle of interaction. And it's really useful to think about that, even when you're just creating pre-recorded uh, interactive stories that have a, you know, that aren't, aren't responding live in the moment. Um, and I think that it's been fun to see how people take things that are, could be quite dry choices within a narrative that they're making and and emotionalize them and make them have some sort of consequence even just using the terms that they use to help, help you make that choice or understand what they're doing and get away from that thing of having somebody mm -hmm. talking to you at the camera saying now you need to make a decision you know it's just yes. implicit and and all of that we're just you know it's that leaning forward thing isn't it it's just becoming part of our lives we're so used to it from youtube um and and vloggers, you know, I was an early vlogger and I, uh, in a time when nobody that I knew used social media or I could do it all completely safely, but you very quickly learned that intimacy of talking to people and sharing stuff and interacting with people in a way that was not shouty, like probably like I'm shouting now, but not <laughs> shouting in a kind of, in a broadcasty way. And, and I think TV's, it's a really interesting moment now, isn't it? With with and you, know, you see it in America, I see it here, where all of the big shows are having to be operated from people's kitchens and living rooms, um, yeah. and all of the stuff that uh, well, I, and, and podcasts. There's a kind of yeah. really for a long time in the UK, we were saying how how we weren't we weren't really podcasts didn't really work with British accents. You know, they <laughs> they weren't very intimate. They were you know we didn't know how to do it. Sort of good thing. morning. <laughs> um, it's a delight to have you here. But actually, this. <laughs> crisis has suddenly resulted in some of some of our really great broadcasters are suddenly in their kitchens yeah. making podcasts and and they're really engaging and then people are like it's like a kind of wave of feeling of like oh we actually get to hear them authentically it's like the radio right it's kind of like old bbc radio days yeah absolutely it's very telling on the radio yeah, a, uh, that, yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that there's a there's a, a thing that's happening with disruption COVID disruption, but gen but also the streaming disruption, which I think the industry has been amazingly, linear TV has been amazingly disruption proof for a really long time because of the amount of advertising money. I know that's been dwindling and budgets have been under pressure and all that kind of stuff, but it's actually maintained the high production values and the there've been a lot of people, we have a lot of friends who are very thankful for the jobs created by television where, you know, we I've been making films with tiny numbers of crews for a really long time. And it's always, I've always it, it took me a while to realize that actually larger crews, larger production values, create more jobs, create more value, also create higher quality programs that more people want to see. And, and then underneath that, there's been this independent filmmaking revolution and YouTube and all those things. And these things have existed in parallel and almost separate from each other. And now the streaming platforms, I think, are making them converge. And there's going to be a lot of mm. disruption, obviously immediate disruption for production now. But I think over the course of the next 10 years, how the linear channels adapt to the streaming stuff is going to be a really important. For, you know, the uh, government report on kids' media usage here shows that more than 50% of kids now prefer YouTube, specifically YouTube to uh, any of the old TV channels that they used to watch. And and the reason that they like that is because it feels, they say, less random and uh, it feels that they have more choice. And the reason that even though, the, the, you know, there's whatever, 83 years of content uploaded to YouTube every day, the reason it feels 
less random is because they're making the choice and they're making they're not having their programming dictated to at specific times by adults i think isn't it yeah um and if we can move in allow the, the storytellers to be able to craft those journeys through all of that stuff it's so frustrating when you put your great stuff in youtube and it if you you know it gets to the end and it just takes you off to somebody else's channel or takes you off to somebody else's content and this yeah. gives with using stornaway to craft that stuff you are able to craft those journeys and keep people watching your media through a whole bunch of different iterations of different types of connections and um and i think that's where we'll see all of the different platforms streaming platforms going um but it's hard for people to get their heads around non-linear I, I i see you know a lot of people or editors specifically experimenting with with zoom right there's right. all kinds of strange interesting uh ways of that they're um showing you this person speaking out of their home and that person and so there's a there's a um a sort of a uh, exploration going on. So it'll be interesting yeah. if we can get this platform in their hands, what they will do. Uh, or yeah. if you could do um, with live streaming, somehow integrate uh, this into your platform, maybe take those video elements. Can you can you connect into a live streaming platform at all? Or We will um, be able to. We will be able to. I mean, I, I, you know, as Kate was saying, the, the, the people who are using it with live now are using it to try and figure out how to map out the potential chaos of giving you know, bringing interactivity into live uh, with improvisation or with, you know, game show type formats. But yes, bringing this into live. I mean, actually, you know, going back to Hovercast again, what I what's great about that is you, you essentially you're integrating social feeds into a platform where you're doing your live stream and you're bringing in people's reactions and you're able to shout out to them. And it's kind of like turning television into a, like a dial in phone show or, you know, but with social media into that and being able to map out some of those choices in Stornoway with pre-recorded stuff, I think would be really, really fun. And um, sounds like you guys need to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Well, I'm, I mean, I was going to yeah. say, if you know, anyone watching this obviously should get in touch if they're interested in using yeah. Stornoway in any way, because we're very open at this at the kind of early stage, the more people playing around with it and coming up with ideas, the better. For it's us, always really. a delight to talk to people also who are already thinking about the television of tomorrow and thinking about yeah. how, you know, thinking in nonlinear ways, thinking in interactive and live uh, ways, because it uh, it's a mind shift. You know, there's a paradigm shift you can see happening in commissioners' heads as they realize that they have to get away from their schedules and their 10, 20, 30 minute slots. And uh, and it is a yeah. release, but like all releases, it's, you know, unless you you need the parameters to make you feel safe, don't you? <laughs> you yeah. But, um... Well, there's so much more to talk about. We've gone over our time. So oh, okay. uh, don't, I... don't get off, don't get off because I want to talk to you off the record, off. And uh, thank you so much. I'm so happy for you. Please, everybody, take a look at stornaway.io, which is S T O R N A W A. Did I spell that right? S T O S T O R N. You guys spell it. S T O R N A A W A Y. A W A Y. Okay. All right. Tracy. My husband said that is some that's a city or some place in England somewhere. So Storm, there is an island in uh, a town, a town on, yeah. on Lewis, um, which is in the yeah. It's called Stornoway, but ours is Stornayway because we hope that people will Stornayway and take it away. Oh. One All right. Well, let, let me talk to you about that in a second. Thank you so and much. Thank you very very Lovely. much for coming on and uh, contacting me. I appreciate that. I I really love this kind of stuff. So. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, this, of course, is uh, Kate Dimbleby and Rupert Howe, who are the co-founders and a mom and pop who own their own business <laughs> and uh, bringing you this new, interesting, exciting platform. Take a look at it. I'm Tracy Swedlow, host of Television Nation and co-producer of TV of Tomorrow Show and Interactive TV Today and all kinds of stuff are, 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 will be announced soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, you.